Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, <clears throat> and I just cleared my throat. This video is live on YouTube, so I can't edit it out. You are watching the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of geek news, product views, and answers that you can use, like an answer to the question, Chris, have you opened up the Lego set that you've been wanting to open up for a while? And the answer to that question is no, I haven't had time. <laughs> Uh, so much to do. Uh, in fact, uh, today I'm live streaming a little earlier than normal. It's uh, noon, and the reason why I'm, I'm streaming at this time uh, is because I've got a doctor's appointment happening, and that's across town at the same time that I would normally be live streaming. And so I apologize that uh, you know, I, you know, I, I wasn't able to send out the update because I don't have someone really managing my schedule for me. Uh, it is streaming live now. Actually, I should probably tweet that out. Um, give me a second. I, 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 I don't have a, a, I have a team. I mean, it's a good team, but it's a small team, but they take care of other things. I kind of have to take care of my own things. So one of the reasons why I'm very grateful that we today, April 17th, 2014, have 669 patrons. The reason I'm happy about that is because uh, I, uh, I'm i trying to expand the team so that I don't have to juggle a lot of these things that uh, otherwise was, would uh, discombobulate me. So let me go ahead and find the right entry. Here we go. Uh, I'll go over and open up TweetDeck, which is what I use on remote machines to uh, connect to my Twitter account. Live streaming TLDR right now. Exclamation mark, Patreon comment. All right, so now all the patrons should know, or theoretically if you're following me on Twitter and you're paying attention. I know there's a lot that gets thrown at you on a daily basis. So thank you to the 669 patrons for making it possible for me to do this at noon or at 3 p.m. or, or, or whatever time. Uh, today, another reason I'm discombobulated is because today we are finding out the gender of Baby Perillo. And apparently some people want to know the gender, and, and I, I don't know, I just, I, we share a lot about our lives, and I'm not sure if I want to share the gender. I, I think I want to make that a surprise for everybody. Everyone can look forward to that very moment, you know. Uh, we'll lead up to it. Oh, come on! What's life without a surprise or two? Um, I, I, I think that's how we're going to play it, though. And hopefully you guys, uh, you guys understand. You gotta understand. I mean, you know, we share so much of ourselves out there with the vlog, and, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, th I think it'll be fun to, to, to wait on that because you guys know we're pregnant. Obviously, we can't make that a surprise. So uh, let's go ahead and rock and roll with the headlines. Facebook has announced a new feature that's coming soon. It's an optional feature uh, if you use the uh, Facebook app on a mobile device called Nearby Friends. So the idea is you can open up your Facebook app and see who's nearby if you're friends with the people um, that you you know want to connect with. And that doesn't bother me. I think I'll probably enable that if only because I'm very careful in terms of who I add as a friend on Facebook. I mean, I have a lot of business connections with people on Facebook, but I, I don't really have a lot of friends. Even though you're listed as a friend, and if you're watching this, I, I don't want to take away from our relationship or anything, but I, I really don't I don't have friends. I have colleagues and associates and and uh, buddies and and pals. But friends, I don't know. There's just something about that word that just weighs heavily on me. Like things that are implied with that word. Like we're friends, man. Why don't you ever wanna uh, help me move? Because um, in my mind, that's where the friendship ends. That's <laughs> that's the delineating factor for me. Uh, any kind of physical exertion on my part, if that's required, uh, that I'm not I'm not happy with at all. So uh, <laughs> there you go, a new feature coming in the Facebook app, Emojipedia.org. You gotta check this out. If you love emoji as much as we love emoji here in this house, oh look, it's a big fat ad for lawn service. If you always wondered, hey, what does that emoji mean? Uh, you could use this particular website, emojipedia.org, to figure out what each particular emoji means, what, what, it's, uh, it rel uh, what its relevance is, like this. The carp streamer. You got to be careful to read that correctly. Carp streamer, not crap streamer. So that emoji, that's the carp streamer, and it explains why it is there and relevant, because carp-shaped wind socks traditionally flown in Japan to celebrate Children's Day. You know, that makes sense. There's a Father's Day and there's a Mother's Day. Why is there not a Children's Day here in the U.S.? I wonder. That That's a good tradition, I think. Diana thinks that because she's pregnant this year, she uh, she gets the Mother's Day present. 
and she's in the other room, so she can't defend herself. And I contend that your mother, you know, well, she's got the baby inside. The baby's got to give her the gift. If I give her the gift, it's kind of like cheating. There's also bamboo emoji. It's a New Year's decoration? Cool. Uh, so if you always want to know about emoji, then uh, emojipedia.org. Fantastic place to discover what's going on in the world of emoji. Let me go ahead and key in something that you should be visiting or paying attention to if you are a geek or a nerd. That's right. I am wagging my finger. It's like, I'm. Uh, this is Pixie. This is my Pixie finger. She's always wagging. LockerGnome.com. Today, we've uncovered uh, a goat scaring a hipster video. Really funny there. Star Wars drapes that you can put in any room that you want. Ooh, might be good for baby Perillo's room. The Big Lebowski Dude Abides Renaissance Style T-shirt. Oh, and I found this last night. Uh, if you're a fan of musicals like I am, you may have heard Jesus Christ Superstar. Great musical. Someone created Muppet Christ Superstar. It's an album you can download for free. Hilarious, dude. You've got to check it out. Um, if uh, To continue with Goat Week, if you never really had goat hooves decorating your hands, there are goat hoof rattles that you can get. Uh, we've also found a few Lego Star Wars discounts out there. Uh, Einstein Relativity Watch sees time from a different perspective. And uh, some cool uh, constructions around Lego and Arduino. Uh, and, and if you've never heard of Lego or Arduino, wow, really? Do I have to catch you up that far? I, I, I didn't realize I did. Question from the community, Patreon community that is, surrounding me. Would you still update your iDevices, and I think he uses that as a general term, that's not a oh, quote-unquote real word. Al Alexander Schiller asks, or I'm sorry, Schiller, Sh Sh yeah, Schiller, Schiller. I've, I've never said his name out loud, I've just, I'm just reading it here. Uh, would you still update your iDevices every year if you weren't a tech and geek YouTuber personality. Yeah, I would. If only because it would scream, hey, update available. I'm like, oh, yeah, I better update it. Uh, new features, new functionality, security. Uh, you know, if only for that reason alone. I think that's a, a bigger deal. And that's, that's more than anything what I wish I could explain to uh, not neophobes. Neophobes? Yeah, like people who hate new things, right? You should update if only for security reasons alone. By the way... Uh, this was made, a request was made of me from BrayhawkTech.com. I'll pull it up here in just a moment. Uh, they offer, or he really, offers a wide variety of services and technology and community support, both online and offline. So if you're not a fan of getting online help, you can get offline help as well. Ranging in everything from fixing your broken machines to shooting web commercials for small businesses. Brandon... The CEO and founder is an 18-year Army VP Corps veteran and technology and community support entrepreneur. He is a patron. This is his website. I needed to tell you about it, and I will show it to you in just a second. He's worked extensively in cyber investigations and information management for the Army's provost marshal offices. Now, uh, for the past year, he has worked uh, at growing this unique brand of online and offline community support, and I think that's really what separates Brayhawk Tech apart from the rest. This is the website right here, Brayhawk Tech. They act as consultants and can help you through if you're having uh, issues that otherwise you can't uh, get solutions for. Now, there, there's a time and a place, right? Now, even geeks and nerds, you know, they think they know everything, but they don't because they ask questions all the time. And sometimes you need to go to a qualified person. You can't just go to some random forums and ask a question and expect that you're going to get your solution. Not always. Sometimes it is possible. But for those times that you need something uh, a bit more deeper than that, uh, you may want to turn to someone within our own community. Brandon would be uh, one of those people I would recommend, if only because of his extensive background. He also has forums over there on his website, Brayhawk Tech. Dot com. Look at that. Like, uh, that, that, I look scared. Here, let me try it. Okay. There you go. You can pause it and use that, even though my iPad was pretty bright there. Didn't mean to make it incredibly bright. By the way, I think one of the reasons why, we, why we've why we jumped in uh, patronage over the past few days is because people want to see my Samsung Galaxy S5 review. My written review, my pseudo-video review. Uh, of the Samsung Galaxy S5. So that's, I think that's why. 
because I, I, I may very well keep that private forever if you want to see my thoughts or what I've done around this particular product. Because, well, I mean, why make it public? I'm getting more patrons out of it. I'm happy about that because it allows me to grow my team and to continue creating stuff for everybody else. Matthew Almany says, uh, he reports this, this came uh, by way of TechCrunch, Google is launching the Home Try-On Program for Glass. Wow. Um, you know, I, I want glass. I'm still hoping to get glass, but that that's just kind of weird. You know, now they're, they're trying to get it out there so badly that they're going to let people try it at home. Which I guess is a good thing because it may convert people, but, you know, that's, that's, I don't want to say that it sounds desperate, but it kind of sounds desperate. Every other day, I swear I see a news article showing that someone who was wearing glass got assaulted or, or, or something bad happened, like they, they, they got robbed or something like that. I, I just don't, I, I don't know if I want that. Uh, if, if I had glass, I, I would probably just wear it around the house. Because I, I do not want the stress and strain of, of getting something ripped off of me at all. Um, so trying it at home sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so in case you wanted to, to know uh, if you could try it at home, the answer is unequivocally yes with this. Uh, Matthew Almany also... Uh, he, 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 Matthew is become, he's becoming a rock star here in these uh, broadcasts. He's finding a lot of really good links that I think are, are worth sharing, uh, good stories, uh, good information. He's a patron as well, and so you know I, I'm certainly paying attention to the stuff that he's sharing with me. Uh, so thank you, Matthew. $50 Project Ara modular smartphone coming in January. January. That's soon. 2015, right around the corner, just a few months away. So Project Ara, phone blocks. Uh, I talked about it a long time ago. I haven't really covered it uh, extensively, but um, Google's definitely making a, 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 a fair amount of headway with this. How how, how would I describe its place? Uh, yes, I'll, I'm, I'm absolutely interested, certainly, because uh, it sounds fascinating in terms of a consumer product. But my question is, who wants it? Who wants it? Geeks, possibly, you know, because it's modular. You know, I like modular things. Hello, Lego. Uh, to me, the phone blocks concept or project era are uh, not as much fun as Lego stuff would be for me, uh, but it's still an interesting concept. Uh, you've got this, uh, the base of a phone, and instead of buying something like this, you know, just buying this device outright and getting what you get here, the idea behind phone blocks, and I think everybody who's watching this video already understands it, is that you can have and replace modules. So let's say you've got the screen module. You put a screen on there, and it's a great screen, but then they come out with a better screen. So you can swap that screen out without replacing the base or without replacing an awesome camera that you purchased. So you can replace these various modules depending on your need. Let's say you wanted an all-day phone um, and, and you didn't care about a camera. Well, you could have the entire back be the camera. I'm sorry, battery to last you throughout the day. Or let's say, uh, you know, taking photos or video with your smartphone was most important. Um, then you would have camera modules out the wazoo. So you could customize and build a smartphone that fits your needs and allows you to upgrade individual components and you need to do it on your own terms. And I think that's a, it's a fascinating concept and, and I am absolutely interested in uh, getting to play with one, certainly. Who wouldn't be? Uh, but I, I just don't know who this is for yet. I don't know if consumers are going to flip for that. They might. It's a possibility. I'm not going to rule it out. Uh, but I, I, I am just curious to know what, what the uh, business case is for it. Like Project Glass, right? Great idea. Awesome idea, right? But in terms of implementation, it seems that people don't want it. And in people in general. Some people do, obviously. Obviously, there are people out there who want this kind of stuff. My question is, will people flip for a modular phone that they can customize components, or do they just want an all-in-one? The market will decide. Great idea. Seems like it's going to be implemented very well. Who wants it? And do, You can answer the question if you want. You're a geek or a nerd. That's fine. I'm more interested in the normies. The people who don't care about technology. The, the people who look at this as an enabler. Like, look, I, I surf the web. I check email. Uh, I just, I got a camera. It's good. So, uh, th those are the, that, that's the group. Because there are 99% more people in like that in the galaxy than there are of, of people who care more that it's modular. So, you know, we just got to think through it, right? I don't know.
So uh, I reserve judgment. I'm not judging at all other than saying it looks cool. It looks to be implemented well, but we will see. The market will ultimately decide. Patron Matthew Almany, <laughs> you guys, I told you, he's ruling the roost here. He sent me a link to this, found it on, uh, I don't know, some random website. Uh, the start, I'm sorry, the restartpage.com. Load this in, uh, I guess you can load it in a desktop web browser, which seems to, that it may work better in a desktop or traditional web browser than it might in, on the iPad. Uh, if, let me flip through it real quick. This is, if I press it real quick, come on. It showed me this, this, the restart buttons. Ah, okay, now it's making a liar out of me. Got to go over to this. You got to seriously check it out on your desktop. Uh, the restart page. There, did you see that for a second? The restartpage.com. And what this, what this website does is it shows you all these dialogues, like restart button dialogues from all these operating systems over the years. And you can you know, simulate a restart on a classic Mac on, uh, you know, Windows XP machine, Windows 2000 machine, Windows Millennium Edition machine, all these OSs and how they were, uh, they had different restart cycles. That's it. That's all the, that's all it does. And it was fun. <laughs> like Emojipedia. Although that was, uh, um, that was something that was a, a bit more, uh, I would say dramatic in terms of, um, a, a, a difference of, uh, you know, a useful website like Emojipedia.org. It's just there for fun. Who knows? So let me go ahead and flip through uh, the list of patrons who are da, 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 uh, given credit or should be given credit for supporting. Flip through that. And look at that. It started. You want to get your web domain in every TLDR, your website, uh, just become a patron at that level and it will be possible. Uh, I don't really have any product views today. Um, it's, it's really been a, a slow couple of days for me in terms of uh, getting stuff to, to bring in and, and, and highlight it, it they come in uh, um in spurts it seems and I don't, I don't have a problem with that i don't want to have my entire office and experience flooded with uh, crap other than the stuff i want to surround myself by oh speaking of crap and stuff i want to surround myself by uh after our uh health appointment to, to see if we can find out the uh, gender of the baby uh, we are going to be heading off to a virtual garage sale of sorts. Someone, an older gentleman, uh, is getting rid of his Star Wars collection. All, like, mint in box. Like, Star Wars collection. Moving from 1996 to, to you know, on up. And so uh, they've invited us to go over to their house and basically take our pick. And so we're going to go Star Wars toy shopping later today. We will see... If uh, Chris picks up anything new, he doesn't know if he's going to pick up anything new yet. Get some Yoda stuff, Darth Vader stuff, Stormtrooper stuff. I may just buy all, his whole house. I don't know. That stuff's worth money. Well, a lot of it is, right? And depending on how much they sell it for, you can actually make money from collectibles. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like that. that that's, uh, that's a, that'll be a fun time for me. I, I, hon, just so you know, I'm also excited about finding out the gender of the baby. Hun? Oh, could you hear me? Okay, she seems distant, and I don't mean in an emotional way. I mean she physically. She's she's completely in the other room. Uh, <laughs> so the idea behind uh, behind uh, the, uh, the 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 Star Wars sale is that he's just tired of collecting. He's he's done with it. I may end up recording a separate interview with him. By the way, your name could be there in future TLDRs. I may record a separate interview with him, depending on how that goes, and, and, and record and upload that video to this channel, like what, 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 it, what why he started collecting Star Wars stuff. And if it doesn't go as a, as a separate video in this channel, it may end up going into the personal vlog. Uh, patron Matthew Halmany, boy, like I said, he's finding some good stuff. Uh, he sent a link off to uh, Lego's, uh, they're, they're, I'm sorry, Gizmodo's Lego subsection uh where you can build an ipad out of lego bricks kind of neat they got the instructions if you if you happen to have the bricks um then this is a, a kind of neat connect sdk.com lg has released an open source connect sdk wanting every tv to basically act like um uh an internet tv and they they look at this one sdk five tv platforms they don't care how, where, when you use it. They just want to get it out there. And I think this is a genius move from LG. I appreciate it so much because it will just accelerate the idea of, you know, not connecting, but 
getting content to interoperate between, let's say, the uh, 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 like the smartphone or tablet and a TV. And I think that's very, very, very important. If you do not do something like that, uh, we're, we're, I mean, basically have this big bridge between these two worlds, uh, we're, we're doomed to forever live in these separate spaces. And I don't think that uh, I would want to do that at all. I want I want to have all my worlds combined into one, and 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 LG is helping make it a bit more convenient. So, you as a user may not be able to do anything with this, but the bottom line is, is manufacturers and developers will be able to take the Connect SDK, this open source framework, and help connect their mobile apps with TVs. It's really kind of that simple, uh, and so I this is to me this is the best open effort I have seen from a major brand ever to make something like this possible. So it is exciting at a deeper level. We don't have any products that necessarily are taking advantage of this right now in, in a massive scale, that is. But in the future, LG is helping make it possible with the Connect SDK. Speaking of TVs, PlayStation 4 sales, according to Sony, have hit 7 million globally. And that's a lot. I am not one of the 7 million. I am not the 99. I, I'm the 1%. Uh, maybe I'm less than 1%. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a PS4. I don't have an Xbox One. I don't have a Wii U. I don't really have consoles anymore. Don't need them. Yet, at this point, uh, gaming to me, as you might very well know, usually happens on the, my, my mobile device. And, and so I don't need a, a console for it. And as far as an entertainment console is concerned, I, I, I'm well taken care of with the options that I currently have, including on my mobile device. I don't know. Consoles are, they're great for what they are, but I think they may be very well on their way out. And we talked about this a while ago. I had a, a great talk with Linus Sebastian. You know Linus. And I'm assuming you know Linus if you're watching this video. Uh, and the, the, the problem with uh, consoles is... They're great for what they are, but I, I just don't know if the world needs them like we used to need them. There's so many other options out there that are either affordable or more accessible uh, than the console. And they're not all out replacements for anything. So why, why would I try to accommodate them? At one point, I was using my Xbox 360s, which I no longer have, and even my PS3 as a disc player, CD players, uh, like a DVD or, well, in the case of the PS3, a Blu-ray player. And I think, uh, you know, when I had the choice this, uh, this past, right around Christmas, um, to offload those consoles for like a hundred bucks a piece, like I can't get rid of them for this much, I gotta get rid of them now, because I, I can actually recoup some costs, even though I think I got most of those Xbox 360s for free through a contest that I won eons ago. I don't know if that video is in this channel or not. I won a ton of Xbox 360s, so I didn't even pay for them. So I guess I came out ahead at the end of the day. Uh, I've got a separate Blu-ray player in our uh, bedroom. Um, we don't, I think it's really the only Blu-ray player we have. It's a portable player, so we could easily you know, pick it up and move it around if we needed to. But uh, we don't really rent a lot of discs, and if we do watch discs, it's usually in that room. Um, I only have one Xbox 360 at this point. That's in the awesome room down in the the uh, the lower level of our house, of our home. It's wonderful. Uh, I think the uh, uh, um, the future is is bleak. And I, I don't want to belabor the point. And I realize I've kind of you know went a little deep on this already. But uh, take a look at the video I did with Linus specifically around the topic of consoles. And I think that's in. That may very well be in the other YouTube channel, the one that's uh, set aside for uh, for vlogs at this point. Um, a couple of things I, I want to uh, cover before I tell you what today's WWYD, the What Would You Do, which I'm going to do a half hour from now live on YouTube. Um, the uh, a couple of things I want to bring up because I, I, I'm one of the things I'm going to be doing. I, I've had this like sticky note out for a, a few days now. I'm going to be setting up maybe bi-weekly webinars, uh, you know, basically seminars that happen over the web for answering video-related questions. This is for, this would be for anybody, not just patrons. Patrons, I think, will get like a 50% discount. Uh, everybody else can join us ad hoc. Uh, we'll make the, the, the webinars after we record them, you know, available for download. Um, but the, uh, I'm thinking about doing, like, what did I call it? Like video, learning video or... 
video questions and answers with Chris Perillo or something like that. But I'm thinking about doing that at least once a month, if not twice a month, um, to answer questions that are related to vlogging and YouTube and video and all that kind of stuff and really base the content on your questions related to that. Because so many people ask about this stuff and I'm like, I have no solution for it. Other than asking during AMA, going to chris.perillo.com and submitting a question for me to answer, answering any one of the patrons questions. I'm thinking about putting a finer point on it in a vlogging webinar series. And this is vlogging, you know, we're, we're YouTubing here, we're video productioning here. Uh, the only other question I had, and this is really uh, in relation to our, our Patreon campaign, when we hit the 5,000 a month goal, which by the way, thank you, that has given me the ability to make sure I can pay the people that I'm paying this, you know, every month to help me do what I do. Cause I have a, a very small team, uh, and, and I have certain bills that I have to pay. You may think, Oh, Chris, YouTube's free. Everything should be free. Not when you have people who you know, do what they do for you. And so, uh, I intend on growing that team. Thanks in part to a, a large part to Patreon. Um, the other thing I've written down is figuring out how to do the podcast again. Cause that's one of the goals. We hit the 5,000 goal for Patreon and I, I want to do the podcast. I just don't know how to do it anymore. And so I, I, I got to figure out how, how to make, how to make all those connection points. Cause I got to manage it now. Oh God. You know, I'm trying not to add more time to my day, but, uh, figuring out where to put these things. I think what we'll do is we'll put the MP3s on SoundCloud and then somehow, I don't know, cause they don't necessarily make it easy to put to iTunes, somehow get that stuff to iTunes in a podcast. I think PowerPress for WordPress to, exists. So we may do that. We may feed that through a conduit through chris.perillo.com. I don't know yet. I don't know how the podcast is going to get rebooted. It exists right now. I don't know if it's being updated at this current uh, stage because, you know, doing the podcast management thing um, just became difficult because I had it going for a while. It's just that very few people watched it or listened to it in relation to what we were doing on YouTube. So I doubled down on, on YouTube production, but you know, part of the goal, one of these goals was to get it, you know, the, the audio out there. So a lot of what we do in TLDR, pretty much every day with TLDR will become a podcast. So you could listen to it. You could do that now if you wanted to. You could listen to this, uh, the audio of this video in the background and you shouldn't have uh, too many challenges. Uh, but I'm still looking for like a comprehensive workflow, not just throwing suggestions at me. I need an actual workflow for it. I haven't worked all the way through it, but that's one of the things that I'm also uh, working on behind the scenes when I'm not doing video for you or editing video for people who like watching the vlogs or answering email or the million other things that I got going on, like uh, doctor's appointments. I'm glad I, I'm not the one who's you know on the table. That's Diana. She's carrying the child with skill and grace. And, you know, some days she doesn't feel like doing things and she still does them anyway. And I appreciate that. Just like I appreciate you. Uh, in a half hour or so, I'm going to be recording in the broadcast for the What Would You Do Today? What would you do if you went blind? This is the question posed to me by patron Aaron Linson. And I thought this would be interesting. This this video that I'm going to record, the answer for What Would You Do If You Went Blind? It's only going to be for patrons. They'll they'll see that uh, video in the uh, the the playlist, it'll be shared, that link, that embed will be shared directly on uh, the Patreon website as well as on YouTube. You should have the links in the updates. Patrons know. They're in the know. And so I'm, I'm doing my best to make everybody happy as much as I possibly can. And I haven't even finished my cup of coffee this morning. In the Boba Fett Greedo mug, Boba Fett, Mandalorian. Greedo, Rodian. And there's Dengar. Did you see Dengar? Did you know Dengar was there? My coffee's a little cold. Mm. Cold coffee is better than no coffee. Thanks again for remembering to like, comment, share, subscribe, watch even more of our videos right now. And of course, um, you know, just be you. And, 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 and I will promise you that I will try to be a better me for you with every day that goes by, including today. At this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. We'll EU you later.